Now back time, we've got a bunch of stuff stacked up here. Let's see what we've got. Switches. Excellent. It's a little switch assortment. These ones I thought had gone missing, but they've finally got here. So you can see you've got these different types. That's a momentary switch. Some momentary, some latching. That's latching. So it looks like you've got momentary latching of both types. So momentary on the front, latching across the back. That's what it looks like. Let's get another random one. Yep, that's latching. That's momentary. So it's a few different sizes because I didn't have any of this type laying around. I've been meaning to get some for ages. I think I tried all these before some time ago and for whatever reason I never got them. So I'll get another go. These are triggered by that repair I had to do with the LED lamp where the switch was bad. But these aren't the right type. The type I did want disappeared, of course. Although, who knows, they might turn up yet. But they're the same as this, but the legs are different. Maybe I could even use one lead, bend the legs out if I have to. Capacitors. It's amazing how much packaging there is for two capacitors, isn't there? So these are polyester films, 0.47 microfarad, 400 volt DC rated. So I've got these potentially for repairing the Heathkit IT28, which is sitting over here. So I needed new capacitors for that thing, so I bought a range of different ones. This package one I already opened up because I wanted some bits out of it. So these are some round buns and they've got 10mm and 11mm. So bits like this are often used on bits of equipment. So we've got plastic feet on the bottom which are bolted on. Sometimes there's a rubber bung on the end of that foot so it stops them sliding around. That's quite common, especially on this older gear that I do. I wanted to get some rubber feet because the Keefley 225 had one of those rubber feet missing. And so I wasn't quite sure if it was going to be a 10mm or 11mm to fit. Because the hole was just over 10mm, depends on the sizing I suppose. So I ended up getting 11mm. And I've already replaced the feet, that's why I wanted them, because I was working on it. So this is the original Keefley foot, which is in there. right? Not quite exactly the same thing, but that's what was in the Keefleys. That's the original one. And I put these ones in place. So it's got these new bungs in there, so it's got brand new feet on it. It does not slide anywhere now. The original ones are quite hard, you know, so rubber, you know, it's quite stiff and rooted. So these tend to slide quite easily. You know, I can put it on the desk like this and slide it. With this one here, can't slide that. So these are pretty cheap. I'll put links down below, obviously, for these things. You can even, if you're building a project, you can just drill a hole straight in the bottom of it and stick this in the hole. Perfect. Also couplers. PC817C. Bunch of them. Now I've got these because I realised I don't actually have any auto couplers. Because we're doing that beginner video series and I wanted to talk about auto couplers and I did a video on that, it's already been published a while ago now. And I realised I don't actually have any auto couplers because I wanted to do a little demonstration one or something, you know, and actually hook one up and show how it works. Couldn't do it because the only one I've got is like on a PCB, like this one here, which is on a the ball, there it is there. So that's what I actually talk about. And I realised I don't actually have any auto couplers. I've got some other ones which are like Triac ones, like a little bit different. But they're with these, so I thought I'd get some. So now I've got some stock of them. More capacitors. These are polypropylene caps. 0.47 microfarad. 47 10 percent 600 volt DC rated. I've realized I didn't actually have many of these kinds of film caps and stuff like that, so I don't actually have anything. These plastic caps like this, poly caps. So I thought oh, I might as well get a bit of a stock of these and you know buy a few that I may or may not use when I'm doing bits of valve gear refurbishment. I don't tend to do valve gear, so it's not really been a big thing for me, but I thought I'd better get some. So polypropylene. If you're used to doing valve gear, what would your recommendation be to replace paper caps? Would it be polypropylene, polystyrene, or some other kind of poly cap? So let me know which ones you think I should actually use. Maybe I should be using mica, I don't know. Tell me. I'm not an expert on valve stuff. I'm going to put in something in probably uh, the polyester caps most likely. Well, these finally arrived in. I think I've got to be funded for these. These are just micro SD card adapters. So if you've got a micro SD card from something, such as a Raspberry Pi or whatever, you can plug it in the back there, and then plug it into your USB port, and 
you can then use the card. So it's handy for things like DVRs, you know, like automotive DVRs, like dash cams. I've got a few of them, that's what I mainly bought it for. I've also got some other devices where I'm using micro SD cards in, some of these projects I've built. I've got micro SD card adapters built into them, and I'm using them for logging and checking data. I sometimes need to pull the cards out of those and, and put them in these. I realised my adapters were starting to fail. I had a couple of adapters which are playing up. Got one of these and it works really well. So I thought I'd get some more. But these took about four months to arrive. It's in there somewhere. You're kidding me. <laughs> oh my dear. All that to send me one Zinna diode. There was one time I got a bunch of them and there's one short there. I think I used up all their stock. I actually purchased their, all of their stock and obviously their stock count was wrong and had by one. I thought they'd just write that off and not worry about it. But no, no, here it is. One three volts Zinna diode. Unbelievable. Oh, there's more than one package in here. If I'm careful, I'll be able to do this without you seeing my drift. I'm trying to dock myself. So, square fuses. Oh, I've actually forgotten all about these. When did I buy these? That was a while ago. Anyway, half an amp up to 6.3 amps. Just a little assortment set. Could be a handy thing to have. Sometimes you get circuit boards that got this kind of fuse in it. What I was actually prompted by is when I did the Datron 4700. That had one of these kind of fuses in there. And I thought I'd better get some of those because they're actually having these in stock. Okay, last thing. Ah, okay. These also took a little while to arrive, they weren't too bad I suppose, I think it's about two months. So here's a inline load resistor, 50 ohm load, rated at 1 watt, DC to 1 gigahertz. You can get these older ones, but they're quite expensive, or you can get these cheaper ones from NXpress. I don't know how good it actually is, let's measure it. Right, let's see what we get. Let's go across the input onto the centre position, the centre pin, 49.9 ohms, that's pretty good actually. So let's go onto this side as well. Basically almost exactly 50 ohms. That's good. That's actually pretty good. Nice. I was putting like 51 ohms or something like that because you know that's what you tend to get. But no, that's good. Bang on. And also got some of these little probes. Which are very much like the fluke ones. So these are meant for going on into the meter lead. And there's a sharp point there. So you've got leads you really like. But the points aren't sharp enough or you need to go into small areas or you need to do like SMD kind of work, then you can put these on your probes. So I've already got some other ones like this. These are very much like the fleek ones, but they're probably not quite as good. Let me get a lead. I haven't had this mosmet in just here. So let's just try to fit. Yeah, it's a bit loose that one. Yeah, it's not a tight fit. It could be tighter. It's not a great fit. I mean, it's okay, I suppose, but yeah. It's certainly not as nice as the fluke one. So, this is a fluke one here, I think. That's a nice tight fit, that one. Much better. This one's really tight, this one. This is a definitely a fluke one. Yeah, those are much nicer. So, yeah, they're not as good. That fitment is nowhere near as tight. So, one of the things I think about with these, I think what prompted me to get them, actually, was the Peak Electronics ESR Gold. Because that's got 2mm jacks on it. Let's just snatch this open with an actual knife. And these probes are 2mm, right? These also are 2mm in here, so you can actually stick these on the end of a probe. And then these gives you flying leads you can use as probes as well. Let's get these off. All right. So then you can just have that laying there, then you can probe with this instead, maybe. This seems like a bit of a bodge. Looks almost like a needle shoved into a connector. But I don't know if it actually is or not. But again, I was thinking about this for the ESR meter, because it's got connectors on there. I'll put them on here, maybe. Then probe onto circuit boards with this, rather than trying to use the crocodile clips. I think that was probably what I was thinking, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't remember half the stuff I do now. So here's the ESR70 here. Oops, I'll just push the button. The idea was I could then plug these into that and use these as flying probes. So sometimes you want to use crocodile clips because you want to grab all the capacitor legs and actually measure up there and hold it. That's fine. But sometimes you want probes because you want to, you know, poke around on a circuit board and use that. So I've got these ones, thinking that might be good for that, and that's actually a really nice fit. That's a good fit on there. Now these are not gold plated or anything, these are gold plated. Peak actually sell like a gold plated kit for these, you can actually buy them from Peak. 
and they're all gold and really nice. I don't have that. <laughs> I could have asked for them maybe, I don't know, but I could buy some myself even. But I thought I'd get these, these are pretty cheap. I don't know how good they are though. But that feels like a nice fit on there. It's dead till I can't get it back on again. What's going on there? What's happened? <laughs> oh, what's happened there? Has that come off? It has. So just here is the inner sleeve from this piece. That's supposed to be in there. Like that. And it came off and got stuck on there. <laughs> anyway, right, the other thing is that you should be able to get these and these as well. These and these, got that? There you go, that's now plugged in there. So then you can be able to use this kind of probe instead. Because these are two millimetres, these are two millimetres. Getting them plugged again is not nice. I thought that might be an option as well. So if you like the video, don't forget to click like and subscribe if you've not been subscribed before. There's a thanks link down there if you want to give me a one-off donation to help me either buy items of mailbag or fix basic test gear. That's always really appreciated. There's a playlist here for things I think you should watch. There's a playlist there, YouTube thinks you should watch. There's a subscribe link over here, which you can click on to subscribe. There's a Patreon support link over here if you want to donate to the channel, you know, a couple of dollars a month or whatever it may be, and help me to buy more stuff to make videos with. Bye.